The Bible says in verse 5 of Judges 14, Then Samson went down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. Now you have to understand the language has changed a little bit. He's rent the lion like he would a goat or a lamb. And he had nothing in his hand. He did it with his bare hands. And he told not his father or his mother what he had done. First Peter chapter 5 very familiar portion of scripture. I put it together because that's how I get it. You know, you have to understand some of you probably think in words. You know, Brother Carl, you're an intelligent man. You probably think in words. I got cartoons. <laughs> I see things in, a, in, in an animated way. First Peter chapter 5, we're going to read verses 6 through 8. Humble. I'm going to say this. You'll hear me say this. This is just something that, especially when my pride gets the best of me, I, I'll whisper this to myself or I'll say this to myself or I'll point at myself in the mirror and say it. Humility is invincible. Oh, you'll learn that one in the long run. God will, God will resist the proud. Well, how come I can't do like he does? Well, humble yourself. How come I can't do what she does? Humble yourself. If, if it's about you getting glory, God's, not, God's just going to halt you. But if, if, you, if you don't care who gets the credit, but make sure God gets the glory, there's no limit to what you can do. Listen, this, this, this is not a suggestion. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. You may be due today. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Let me help you with something here. Do you really think you care about yourself more than God does? See, some of you, you will fill your life with so much stuff. You'll fill your stomach with so much food. You'll do all these things that you think are so nourishing. Yet on the flip side, God sees the condition of your soul and you could be lost and full and appear blessed at the same time. God is more concerned about your eternity than your feelings right now. Are oh, you hear what I'm saying? For he careth for you. And he, here's some advice. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, and here it is again, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Ain't nothing new. Satan ain't changed his tactics. He's not that smart. The reason he's successful is because we aren't either. <laughs> I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but let's, how many of you have done the same thing, stupid thing to yourself more than once? The first time's a mistake. The second time's, you label that how you want to, but if the shoe fits, come on, Cinderella, put it on. Let's lay down our Bibles. Let's talk, let's talk to the one that loves us and cares. Let's lift up our hands. Let's talk to Jesus, right, Lord? We love you. We need you today, God. We know that you care for us. We think we care for us, and we fill our lives with distractions and, and things that end up destroying us. Help us to lay down every weight and the sin and, and focus on you, Lord Jesus. We want to give you praise. We want to give you honor, Lord. Allow this word to penetrate into the fertile soil of our souls, Lord God, that when a roaring lion comes our way, we can rent it like Samson did in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. Let's give the Lord a hand praise while we're seated. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I want to speak for just a few minutes if I can. And I can. So. I want to talk about a miracle 
and a meal out of your mess. There's an interesting turn of events that followed Samson's altercation with the roaring lion. And I believe that it could help us today. In Judges 14, 12 through 14, it said, And Samson said unto them, He has an altercation with the Philistines and some young men there. And sadly, he's kind of bought into culture. Hello. It's hope for some of us. And says, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if you can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 chains of garments. But if you cannot declare it me, then shall you give me 30 sheets and 30 chains of garments. And they said unto him, put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. And he said unto them, and this is what I need you to listen to. Out of the eater came forth meat. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. <laughs> this moment in scripture contains a message. It, it, it contains what I want to try to convey to you today. To understand it is you have to realize Samson was born to be a deliverer. He was born and destined to be a warrior, deliver, deliverer from the womb. It says in Judges 14 and 4, but his father and his mother knew not that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines. Let me tell you something. God wants to give you victory over your enemy. Yeah. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. Now, I'm going to step on your toes, but it's really up to you. What has dominion over your spiritual life? What stops you from being that, that warrior? What stops you from being that amazing Christian that, that walks in with words, that are fitly spoken with an anointing that reaches out and you lay hands on people and you pray for what, what what's stopping that I'm not, I'm not talking about sins. I'm talking about just things that, that roar in your life that get you distracted from what you're really called to do. Because the Bible says he sought an occasion. That word occasion literally means a quarrel. Come on, married folks. You know sometimes something gets under your skin and you you know you're going to walk in that house and you have every intention of dealing with something and a quarrel's going to ensue. There's going to be a conflict. There's going to be a fight. God wanted the Philistines defeated by Israel. So God raised up Samson that he might begin to deliver Israel. Are you with me? And so back at the ranch here, the situation with Samson, he puts forth a personal riddle. He took the time and he, he thought about it. He was, you know, very thoughtful about what had transpired. I don't know about you, but I think having a lion attack me and I rent him with my bare hands, it'd be something I'd think about. Well, maybe I'm the only one here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that wouldn't impress you, Jonathan. You know, you, you being able to come from a place like Africa, you probably did that for fun on weekends. I don't know. You know, but 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 you know what? I'm, I'll be honest with you. I haven't always been the most stalwart individual. I've, I've been in the woods before, and I knew I, I was hunting in an area that had posted signs all over about mountain lion warnings, and I still hunted there. And I remember walking up this one ridge, and I got out in this absolutely beautiful meadow and I just man the deer are gonna come walking through here. And I started to sit up, get ready, and I man, I tell you what, the hair stood up on the back of my neck, and I knew there was something watching me. I had oh boy, I had that and I knew and I looked and I I couldn't find it, but I was like, okay. And though I was armed to the teeth, I just kind of backed out of there. I didn't want to find out if I could win. I know y'all would have stuck around and said, here, kitty, kitty, but 
Me, I, I, I'm sorry, I, mean, I was lacking a little Samson, I guess. I just kind of backed out of there. But anyway, Samson <laughs> defeated the lion. And so he puts forth a revelatory riddle to the Philistines. And you have to understand it was at this moment Israel was being tormented. Israel was being assaulted and constantly attacked by their assailants, the Philistines. And so God raised up Samson to have a quarrel, to have altercations, to have occasions with the tyrannical tormentors, the Philistines. And so he gave this riddle of his own personal experience of an altercation that he had had with a lion. Are you here? You have to understand that with this altercation, the Bible lets us know he didn't tell his parents. The answer to the riddle wasn't revealed to the Philistines by talking to him. Well, why did I say that? Obviously, the lion didn't scratch him. Obviously, he didn't get bit. Obviously, he did not incur any damage. So instead of being dominated, he dominated. He was able to keep the incident or the victory private. There were no telltale signs that he'd been involved in a lion attack. I don't know about you, but that's a miracle in and of itself. There were no scratches or bite marks or wounds that would have drawn anybody's attention. And so now Samson is dealing with, with the real adversary, the Philistines. And he puts forth this riddle. And he said, out of the eater came forth meat. And out of the strong came forth sweetness. For the sake of time today, I'd like to boil down what Samson was trying to say. This lion that attacked me was attacking me to make a meal out of me. But I'm going to turn this situation around and I'm going to get a meal out of this man eater. I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. This trial may come. This problem may attack me. But I'm of the disposition. I'm of the anointing. And I'm of the calling that God called me for occasion against my enemies. That it comes against me to make a meal out of me. But I'm going to make a meal out of that man eater. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to make a meal out of this. I'm going to make a meal out of this mess somehow. If you remember in verse 7, the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he slew that lion. Some time later, the Bible tells us in Judges 14, 8 and 9, that he returned and he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. And behold, there was a swarm of bees and honey in the carcass of the lion. And the Bible tells us he took thereof in his hands and went on eating. <laughs> Somehow. Those honeybees had come across that lion carcass or that victory. Hallelujah. And, and, and somehow they, they had made a beehive and, and somehow a honeycomb and honey had come to be inside that carcass of that lion. In other words, something had come out of the conflict. There was something sweet going to come out of that. Oh, maybe I'm by myself. You see, where the lion attacked him was a place of a trial. Where the lion attacked him, don't, 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 don't sweep this under the rug. That was a scary moment. That was a trial that could have ate him up. But instead, he's walking back by, and he's getting a nourishment out of that trial from the back. He's getting, he's getting honey out of something that could have hurt him. You got, you got to make that decision. You got to hear me today. You got to start looking at your trials correctly. You got to realize God didn't send them to get you. He sent them so you could get them. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not, I, I don't know whether it was another supernatural move of the Lord on those bees to lead them to make that honey there. I, I want to say, yeah. Nevertheless, Samson revisited that place, that spot of a trial that he was victorious in. 
and in my little childlike mind, I think most of us would have gone by to see and view the carcass of the lion that we've killed with our bare hands. You know, them poor folks back then, they, they, they didn't have cameras. They didn't have Instagram and Facebook. and They, they couldn't post that and say, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> victory is mine. Victor, I mean, man, who's going to walk around and tell us, I killed a lion with my bare hands? Hey, check this, check this fool out. Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. No scratches, no. Let me explain to you something. Honest victories, honest victories are in private. See, the, the greatest thing we can stop doing is quit trying to look victorious on the outside to people and literally become victorious on the inside. Mm. So he had to go by and look at it. All that aside, this incident with its roaring lion had influenced Samson so much that he took the time to create a riddle out of it. In fact, I'm sure that the situation speaks to us and reminds us that when you're walking in the will of God, that in God's economy, when we're walking in the will of God, anything that comes to hurt me will be turned around to help me. No, 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 no. I know, some, I know about, about five people got victory there, but some of you are sitting there going... Because you're still bleeding and you're still wounded. Because um, mm, 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 mm. see, 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 you have to understand the riddle. The riddle tells the story. The eater came to devour, but instead it was a lion that fed Samson. No, no, no. You see the <laughs> the eater. The lion came to devour, but it's Samson that got fed from the trial. From a place that should have hurt, he got sweetness. He got you got to understand how to handle your trial. You got to learn how to spiritually handle things that come against you. It's time for some folks around here to grow up spiritually and realize the lion may come, but the lion is going to feed me. That trial is going to bless me. I'm going to get victory. You have to understand that lion came to get nourishment. That lion came to eat because he wanted to be stronger. I can't imagine as he lurked in those bushes or whatever he stalked up behind, he probably looked at those bulging biceps and thought, oh yeah, it's dinner time. He probably had all sorts of Thanksgiving ideas in his head about how he was going to take this joke around. Yeah, your enemy goes about as a roaring lion. See, he looks at some of us and he sizes us up. But see, you don't know, you know, oh, dang. this is why you get victory on the inside instead of the outside. You look like easy prey, but the lion don't realize who he's messing with. The lion doesn't understand what kind of people he's stalking. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. I'm going to get a meal out of this. I'm going to get honey out of that thing that came to hurt me. Oh, hallelujah. Let's love the Lord right now. <laughs> that lion came. He thought he showed up at Golden Corral. He thought he just built a hometown buffet right there. Hallelujah. But instead, that roaring lion gave Samson strength and sweetness. That lion strengthened the one that he came to get strength from. Listen, church. There are no accidents. There are no mistakes in the Christian life. There are no cosmic crashes. And there's no blame it on Murphy moments. There's no oops in our oppositions. There's nothing that can affect, alter, or yank things out of the hands of God of the life of someone who's called and converted. 
The Bible tells us in Romans 8 and 28, and we know, and we, see there's a difference between everybody and we, and we, we're the saints at the day, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. You have to understand the entire outlook that you have is based on that verse right there. Those of you that get upset and want to throw in a towel when the lion shows up is you no longer believe God. Your faith is in stuff. Your faith is in things. Your faith might be in yourself. But when you realize that all things work together to those who are called. Oh, so, see, see, you got to understand there is a separation there. That's why some of us look like plum crazy. Because other people are sucking their thumbs and sulking out at the house, thinking God left them, the church betrayed them, the pastor's ugly, his wife don't lie. That's it. Those people with victory are walking around going, Abraham's blessings are mine. They're killing lions. They're defeating the enemy. They're laying low the wicked because they're going to get a meal out of that mess. Nothing can alter your divine appointments. There's no karma, no coincidence, no circumstance that can pluck you out of the hand of Almighty God. Yea, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. God orchestrates. God organizes. God is control of all of it. Let the lion come. He's going to feed me. Oh, we got any lion killers in the house. Throughout scripture, from liars to lions, fiery furnaces and fake friends, God's people always overcome. That sweet psalmist David could testify to this. And he did. After defending the flock against lions and bears. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. And then showing up and stepping up to a divine appointment. Now, if we switch from David's story to how some of us act. I had to face a lion last week. God, you don't love me. I got a bear, that's it. I, you know what? I ain't paying my tithes. I'm not doing the job. I'll get there when I feel like it. Oh, what, a giant now? I'm done. Oh, let's get rid of Now, you know, you ain't no one jumping and shouting right now. Some of you, every one of those was sent to be a victory. But instead of knowing that, Greater as he is in me, you let the outside dictate to you what the inside was going to be. You throw in the towel. No, don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel, even Peter said, I go a fishing. You see, David teaches us. Samson shows us. He's that stepping up. The appointed time to face the lion, to face the giant. All the ups and downs of David had to deal with a backslid king. And so much more, it's only right that David would make the statement I'm about to read to you. The statement that rose out of a shepherd boy who, who went from the sheepfold to the throne would declare in Psalms 31, For I have heard the slander of many. They said some unkind things about me. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. Oh, no, you might have a lion showing up in your life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my God. My times are in your hand. Oh, no. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from them that persecute me. Can, can you grab that kind of faith in God today? Can you step in and realize Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him? 
Can you find that place? You have to say David was surrounded by faithless soldiers, scorning brothers and a bitter king. But David remained surrendered and committed to God and the will of God no matter what he faced. Oh, hallelujah. He stepped up. And he stood out while everybody else was ducking and hiding in self-preservation. David faced a giant with a slingshot and a stone because he realized, I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. I'm going to get some sweetness out of it. David punctuated it. My times are in God's hands. If he wants me to go through this, then I'll be victorious. If he wants me to go, he knows the way that I take. He knows what's going. He knows what's coming. Why would I bail out on God? Great faith in the presence of people. Great trust in the midst of terrible trials. Confidence in the midst of catastrophe. It was also David that said, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Your steps are ordered, but is God delighted in the way you handle it? Listen, folks, get this. Whether it's a lion, a giant, a trial, Lies or words, if it's going to help you, hell didn't send it. If it's going to help you, hell didn't send it. Oh. (laughs) You know what? Can I get an amen? You have to understand the devil's not that smart. The devil's not going to send something to assist you. The devil won't send anything that's going to aid you. He's not going to send something to propel you into your destiny. I've said before, I'll say it again. Goliath was there for David. Nobody knew who David was. It was Goliath that that was the problem that came to platform that propelled David to the promises that he was... See, so why are you crying about your life and you're crying about your job and you're crying. Other people that say, well, this is my moment. I was born for the, I was born for this occasion. Oh, I know. I, I, I got four people with it. I was born for this. I'm a one. I was, a, I was made a warrior for this. I'm going to worship. When there's problems, I, I'm going to praise. I'm going to sling my stone. I'm going to run lion. I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. I'm going to get honey from this hurt. It's how you handle these situations that define who you are. Look, if you want to step aside and let someone steal your crown and take your spot, because your word, you might lose a couple of bucks, or you might lose out on some meals, or no, then you go ahead. I'm sure God's going to raise up a David to replace a Saul. He'll find someone to do what you want. He's coming back for a church. You better hear what I'm saying. You better get in, and it's time to make a meal out of your mess. Let's be honest. The exact same situation that caused Saul to shrink was the same situation that caused David to stand out. Oh, boy, that, come on, let's say that's painful. The same situation that causes you to shrink, somebody else is going to stand up. Is there not a cause? Oh, and you finally get to that place in your walk with God this morning to say, is there not a call? In this dark world, you can point at the problems. You can talk about the issues. You're willing to say anything and everything about what the church needs to hear. But can you stand up in your own life and your own walk with God and say, is there not a cause? 
As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to believe in holiness. We're going to believe in separation. We're going to preach. We're going to teach. We're going to get Bible. We're going to pluck as many out of the fire as we can. Oh, somebody get ready to make a meal out of this mess. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a choice. Serve God or temporarily save your own skin. Because nobody gets out of here alive. David stepped up and somehow, some way, he repeated at least for the third time, found what I'm willing to die for. Well, he already did that with the lion and bear. And now there was a giant. You have to ask yourself. You see, a coward dies a thousand deaths. Paul said it this way. Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing. See, you got, some of you got too much going on in your life. Some of you are too busy with a bunch of stuff that don't matter. Paul said, but it's one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. Under those things which are before I press, I'm going to serve God. I want to live for God. I'm determined to know nothing among you, save Jesus Christ, and in crucify. Paul gives us a living color picture of what it is to turn his back on the world and give it all to Jesus. Are you hearing me? You have to understand Matthew 6, 21 tells us for where your treasure is. Where your heart God can't have your heart if it's in treasure. If God's not your treasure, where your money goes, that's where your heart follows. How many of you are spiritually obscure because you won't face and defeat the giant in your life? Don't look at the giant in somebody else's life. Look at the giant in your life. Look at what stopped you. Look at what's held you. Be honest. Look at the meals in God you've missed because you let the lion live. And it roars every now and then, and you realize, I'm not, I'm not ready to deal. How many are spiritual pygmies because you won't face your Goliath? Listen, it's as plain as David did what Saul wouldn't. And that's what it boils down to. Where's my spiritual folks at? What are them folks at that understand what it is to turn your back on the world and live for God? Where's the worshipers at this morning? Where's, where's those praises? Where's my praising people at that refuse to become bitter because of a problem? Where them folks at today that refuse to get upset and blame the church because everything didn't turn out how you thought it should? Where them lovers of God that say, where he leads me, I will follow. Lions, tigers, bears, it don't matter. Is there not a call? I'm going to get a miracle and a meal out of this mess. I'm going to get some honey out of this. I didn't come here to waste nobody's time. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to have to fight some lions. I'm going to have to deal with some giants. I'm going to have to stand up and be counted when others shrink from their duty. Where are those folks that refuse to quit because of trials? Because you know God is going to use it for your good, and you'll get a meal out of that mess. You'll get sweetness out of that trial. How many know that a few things work for the good? How many know that most things work together for the good? Oh, no, y'all ain't great, but that's how you're living. But where are my people that are all things. You see, when you get in God's purpose, even your problems will propel you into your promises. Oh, see, that, that was better than that. That, that, ought to got, that, ought to, that ought to got a shout out of some of you. You got problems and you've been, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Isn't it funny? You know what, what? You know the things that bothered me the most? Listening to preachers that preach something, they said, why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I say that? 
I've been reading that same Bible. How did I not get that? Hey, preachers, how many of you sit there when someone's getting up there and tearing it up? You're like, you could do that. Not until you kill them giants. Not until you slay them lions. Not until you say, is there not a cause? Oh, you may get up there and talk, but you may not get up and do this. You got to have some lions in your. Mm. You, you, you got to you got to you got to give that giant a moment of pause. And he looks at what are you doing here? Let me show you. Well, you got to try all your face and you ought to you ought to be standing like like last. Yeah. See, 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 you came in a bad sequence of things because I can tell you a list of carcasses in my past that I'm getting a meal from, that I'm getting honey from. And guess what, Chuck? You're about to be next. You're about to be next. I'm not going to become under the dominion of power. Oh, no. I was created for this. I was born for this. Some of you can talk about the political problem. Some of you can talk about the world problem. Or you can become the solution to it. The church. The church. The church. Some of you are doing more bargaining for Pharaoh than you are for God. Some of you are more worried and listening to the Pharaohs of this world. You know what's going on in that White House. You know what's going on in that house. But you don't have a clue what's going on in the church house. You can't show up for prayer on time. It ain't important. But you won't miss your show. You won't be late for dinner. I'm not just stepping on my feet. No, I'm not the enemy, is it? You're letting me. You're letting that enemy wander around and own your property. Or you can brag about your property, but you ain't owning it. You got lions and giants there that'll let you, oh, yeah, you ain't coming over here. You put your name on it, but it's mine. Oh, I know I got some, y'all. Oh, yeah, that hurt. Oh, yeah. The devil's a bully. And you'll remain a bully until you get enough guts to punch him in the nose. I mean, not that, that Mike Tyson's the most sage of people ever born, but he said one thing that's true. Everybody's got a plan until they get a punch in the mouth. The problem with some of you ain't even willing to stand up and fight. But I like it. Well, maybe that's the problem. It's when you're liking that, you can't fall fully in love with Jesus. Where are my battle scarred folks at? The enemy, the enemy respects that worship. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, uh, you got to, they done been down. Oh, they got the scars to prove. I done, I done attacked them and they're still standing. They're still worshiping. They're still, they still come to church excited. They still read their Bible for a word from God. They're still praising and giving God glory because they still believe that he's worthy. They haven't been defeated and silenced by the triumph. And the trouble of this life. How many knows what a scar is? Yeah. Guys are a little goofy. We compare scars. Now, we're not going to, like, disrobe and do that right now. But I'll be honest with you. Unless you've had major surgery, I got you all beat. Well, maybe not you. I ain't had 50 lives. You know what a scar is? A scar is proof of healing. Scars are the silent yet visible manifestation of proof that you survive. In other words, what hurt you, what cut you, didn't win. You see, the issue with some folks in the church, you know, the ones who are stuck spiritually in the same place for years, they ain't got nothing new to say. They keep regurgitating the same thing over and over. The same stories, nothing new. They're like Saul. They're stuck in the tent. They hold the position but not the title. 
They're content to do nothing about the giant. We can coexist. That's all right, Nehemiah. I'm going to go feed you in a minute here. I'd be crying like that too if I was hungry. In fact, I will later. That's where we learned it right there, folks. Your husband cried. He ain't no different than when he was that old. And feed me, mama. You see, the problem is when we get content to do nothing about the giant that's standing on what should be your territory. And you get comfortable with the giant that you won't face. See, and you settle for, oh, well, that's my property, even though I can't possess it. And you get comfortable with the emotional wounds in life. And you hide in that comfort and contentment. Saul's tent was already found solace and comfort. He refused to change. He refused to address the issue. Now, I've done preached about that. I'm not going to take this one any deeper than that. And like Saul, he was nursing some emotional wounds. But because he had the role, he was king and he had the armor, he wanted everybody to be impressed of what he once was. You're in a bad place if you want people to esteem you for what you used to be. That, that stung a little bit, didn't it? Well, trust me, it stung me first. You see, some people worship their wounds. Oh, God, if you knew the week that I had, if I tell you what I've been through, and we sit here and want to negotiate our pain pans, our wounds are the excuse of all your why you couldn't. They are why you didn't. But I won't talk to those other folks. Them other ones. Where are you at today? Where you're going to take those problems to propel you to your promise. I'm, I'm talking about those folks that, you know what? You coming against me lets me know I'm on the right track. The enemy ain't going to attack where he ain't got nothing. You ought to get really scared spiritually if you ain't got no trials going on. You better get really alert when you start to realize ain't nothing attacking me. I got everything I need, man. I got I got years of, of stored up. And I'm good. I'm in a good place. I got no. Because a roaring lion goes about to get territory. He's hungry for someone that he wants to take over. Where are you at today? Where are you at? See, because God didn't send that roaring lion to eat you. He sent that roaring lion to feed you. He wants that giant to strengthen you because he wants you to get honey out of what came to hurt you. He wants you to stand up. We sang it in that song today. Oh, boy, I, I, I looked at Erica. You need to sing that again. You need to sing that by the word of their testimony, by the blood of them. You have to understand. A testimony is about facing an adversary and getting victory. The riddle that Samson gave forth was a testimony. Oh, son. You don't get to your divine appointment without facing an adversary. Mm. Goliath propelled David. The same situation ended Saul. Because it's what you choose to face that determines who you become. Your level is based on what devil you'll defeat. You don't believe me? Ask Esther. Ask Moses. Ask Elijah. Ask Peter. Ask Paul. C come on, where's my messy miracle people? Where's those that realize, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, this problem... Isn't a problem. 
It's an appointment. You, you really think David looked back at facing Goliath with tears and crying and whining? Why God? Oh, no, no, no. I remember, in fact, when he had another problem, you know what he said? I want that sword of Goliath. There ain't nothing like it. Oh, it represented a big, that testimony. We need to thank God for the divine appointment. Oh, if I could help anybody here that wants to move forward in ministry, problems aren't the problem. Your attitude towards the problem is the problem. Oh, no, I, I've even told people that giving me a hard time as a pastor, I thank God for you. You give me a moment of pause. You help me realize I'm on the right track. You let me know where I, I don't mind people getting mad. I try to point out my faults. Amen. You can't make mistakes if you're not trying to do anything. Those of you that all you got is success, you ain't done nothing. We need to thank God for those divine appointments. You think, well, what about my attitude? You know there's people that believe in one God, but their attitude's wrong, so they're disqualified. You look in the book of Acts. There was a lady coming up behind the disciples. These are the men of the Most High God. These are the people of the one true Most High God. He turned around and rebuked her. It wasn't what you were saying is wrong. Her attitude was wrong. Some of you need to realize you may say the right things, but your attitude's wrong. You may walk in here and say the right things, but your attitude towards the church, your attitude towards the people, your attitude towards the pastor, your attitude towards the is wrong. And that's your giant to face. That's your giant to deal with. That's an appointment for you to get victory in. Not to get a stalemate. Like, well, guess God is not. What you're going through is not about the problem. Oh, no. What you're going through is about your future. You, know, you, you see, if you don't beat the lion, you can't face the bear. And if you don't face the bear, you don't get to the giant. And if you don't face the giant, you don't get to the throne. And if you don't get the throne, you don't get the promise. Oh, it's about where you're going. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Victory and heaven go hand in hand. It's our direction. Every trial to the overcomer is sweet. Anybody here got any diplomas? Any degrees? Oh, let me make, who got their driver's license? <laughs> make it simple. You passed the test. You passed the test, right? Was there a test? You had to learn what those great big red things that say stop on it mean? <laughs> you see every mess is a miracle for those that are trying to do something in God that's how you testify that's how you talk it's not the denial of the problem it's the menace that, that was my divine appointment and I'm going to be improved through the test that I take you see, people that want a testimony don't complain about the test. They don't make excuses. They make declarations. Yeah, David made a declaration. Is there not a cause? What was he saying? He was saying it to the same thing that caused Saul to do jack off. You see, man, when that thing comes into your home that's affecting your children, it's up to you to stand up and say no. It ought to be the men that lead the way in holiness and humility in this it ought to be the men that lead the way and say, you know what, we're going to leave, live pure. We want our men to look like men and our ladies to look like ladies because we refuse to fall in the same way with the world with all that confusion. Women aren't trying to do what men do because they were created to do so much different, so much more. They were called and built and anointed to do other things. Oh, can you imagine all those declarations that were made in the Bible. Is there not a cause? If I perish, I perish. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Uh, Paul said, if we're being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a great work in you will perform it. He's going to finish it. 
hard times don't create chaos. It's during the hard times when the hero within us is revealed. Those of you that are being developed in ministry come to me with problems. What do I do? I don't just tell you the answer. I say, what do you think you should do? Why? I want you to get the victory. I can't kill your Goliath. I can't kill your lion. I can't kill your bear. If you kill it, that's your testimony. That was your decision to not shirk from duty and to step up for a divine appointment. Nelson Mandela said, don't judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. Oh, somebody ought to say, yeah, I'm going to face some lions and tigers and bears, but I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. I'm going to get a miracle out of this problem. I'm going to get some honey out of this hurt. <laughs> Ryder Carroll said, no matter how bleak or menacing a situation may appear, it does not entirely own us. It can't take away my freedom to respond or my power to take action. That is your choice. What are you going to do when you face your lion? When you face your lion? When you face your child? What are you going to do when it comes to down and say, are you going to live for God? Chris Bradford said, Anyone can give up. It's the easiest thing in the world to do, but to hold it together when everyone expects you to fall apart. Our greatest glory is not in never falling, but in rising every time. We Second Timothy, one of the greatest declarations in the word of God. I have a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. I'm telling you, God has a purpose for your life. That plow's come to bless you, not stop you. That lions come to feed you, not feed on you. I'm telling you, God has a plan for your plan. God has a promise on the other side of these problems. God's going to use that pain to propel you to your purpose. You will never enter into your destiny as long as your adversary has dominion over you. Why he raised up a Samson. That's why he sent to David. That's why he had an Esther, a Peter, and a Paul. What you think he's done doing that? He's looking in this church right now. Who's gonna step up? Who's gonna rise? Hey, such is common to man. We all got issues. But what separates us out is who's gonna stand up and be counted, and who's gonna go find a place of contentment in a tent doing nothing. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me ruin the story of David and Goliath. God had every intention of Goliath losing. Goliath was sent to be defeated. The defeat of Goliath was a foregone conclusion. It was just a matter of who would stand up and face him. God was merely looking for a believer to step up. And sadly, the story realizes all those soldiers, that king without all, all that arm and that great height and all the stuff that he had, and it was someone that really had a heart that said, is there not a cause? Doesn't matter how big, how little, anything about, if you'll just take up the cause. If you'll just say, you know what, I'm going to get a miracle and a meal out of this mess. The world's going to hell in a handbasket, but not the church. Oh, is there not a cause? Is there someone here willing to say, wait a minute, I got a riddle for you. I'm going to get a miracle. I'm going to get fed. I'm going to get honey out of this hurt. That's why God allows lions to roar. God allows lions to attack so we can overcome. You're defined by what you overcome. Sadly, some of us brag about those little things we overcame because we really don't want to face the bigger ones. We brag about what we stopped doing, but we don't really want to talk about the big thing we really love that we didn't stop. Now, I'm not trying to make fun. I'm not trying to poke, but I, I remember a, 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 an evangelist one time. This is 100 years ago. It was a brand new conference. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't know caffeine was that big a deal. In fact, when I got in church and I realized that people, hey, yeah, you, you got too much caffeine. I'm like, do you realize what I just came out of doing? Hello? And you're worried about caffeine? Uh, uh, I, I need a doctor. I need somebody to help me understand this. But see, you have to understand everybody has a different giant. 
I can't tell you what yours is, and you can't tell me what mine is. But we better be honest to ourselves what it is. Yes. And so this, mission, this evangelist said, listen, I had a problem drinking Coca-Cola. Now, Coke's not a sin. But when they were preaching, they said, you don't understand. I get up and I'm drinking Coke. I have Coke with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And God convicted me of it. So I stopped drinking it. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I kind of chuckled when the, what the, I heard what the remedy was. So now I drink Dr. Pepper. You didn't get victory over Jack All. Let me just help you with that. I can come in and get off those drugs, but if I get another drug to reply, you're still addicted to something. It's, you, 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 you're messing with your own mind and you didn't get victory because it still got you as territory. Don't brag about that little thing you put in the corner. Let's talk about the giant that's facing you and I. We've got to overcome the dominion of the adversary that's actually stopping us from doing the will of God. Because you have to understand, Goliath was in the way of the will of God. Go, going and killing some little Philistine over in the corner, didn't going to do it. You got to get the giant. All the other lions and bears out there that don't have a lamb in its mouth, you can go kill one of them while they're running, but you got to get. <laughs> There's not one disaster. There's not one problem that can come into the a child of God's life to destroy them unless they respond negatively to the situation. If Saul would have faced it, Saul would have been victorious because Goliath was doomed. Let me tell you this. God's coming for a church. You got to get it out of your ideas and your mind what that church is going to look like. Some of you throw in the towel and quit it and never go all in because you have a different idea. And say, my God, the biggest, the biggest thing about the church should be what you bring to the table, not what you think others should be. Hey, critique me all you want. Critique someone else all you want. But the biggest problem you have is staring you in the mirror and you get victory over your giant. There's no situation. There's no problem. There's no pestilence. There's no pandemic that can separate you from the love of God. But you've got to be willing to stand up and face the, the real giant you face it, whatever it is that consumes your time, consumes your energy, gets your thoughts, gets your finances, gets your heart, becomes your treasure. That's the giant that needs to go. Romans tells us, Paul say, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You need to take that and you need to personalize. I'm not going to let nothing come between me and God. I'm not going to let a habit. I'm not going to let a hobby. I'm not going to let an addiction. I'm not going to let nothing. Oh, if God ain't biggest in first and I can't prove it, then bless God, it's time for some things to change. Is there not a cause? I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. Nothing has the power to defeat you unless you let it steal your faith, rob you of your faith, destroy your faith. John 5 and 4, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our if you got the faith to give it up, you got the faith for victory. Every trial, every battle, every problem, every mess is a face fight, a faith fight. Because faith is the victory. <laughs> When that rich young ruler came to him and was bragging about all the wonderful things he did, he killed all the little things. But that wasn't his giant. What's your real giant? Mm. He walked away sorrowful because he wasn't going to face that giant. God allows things in your life that seem like they're hurting us. But the truth is, is God sent it to save us. That's why the psalmist said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I have kept thy word. Those afflictions bring you in alignment with the word of God. 
Listen, that dentist gives you a shot and digs around in your mouth, not because he hates you. Took me a while to get this one. This one's a toughie for me. You have to understand, and I told him flat out, I told him twice now. Come in there with that big knee last shot. I'll be honest with you. You get this done and get it done right the first time. Well, I'd rather get in the ring with Mike Tyson than do this. And I ain't kidding. I got a shot against Mike, but this guy's going to got a needle that long, want to stick it through my head, go all the way out my back. Oh, I, come on, man. Y'all, y'all don't know. Everybody's got their, I don't like Dennis. I don't like him. He's not doing all that because he hates you. He wants to help you. You've got to learn to use your will over your emotions. I hate Dennis. Don't go to the dentist because it feels good. In fact, I'm paying this joker. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe you can't grasp the gravity of the dentist situation. I got a dentist appointment coming up in case you don't know. I don't pay him because he hurts me. I pay this guy hundreds of dollars to drill a hole in my head. And if I went by my feelings, I'd never show up and I'd never give him a dime. But I also be gumming my food right now. See, many times people let their feelings cause them to abandon the will of God. They, call, they get their feelings cause them to quit a job they should keep. They let their feelings cause them to walk out on a marriage or even leave a church and walk away from God. Listen, there are some things you got to stay with regardless of your feelings. Oh my God, I know I'm in your driveway right now. Because in the end, even with all the pain, even with all the mess and all the problems, it's going to bless you and it's going to help you. And you'll get a meal out of that mess if you'll stick with it. Because like Samson, somehow, you're going to get strength, what you thought wanted to devour you. You're going to get sweetness, something circumstance that you thought would come to hurt you. Every situation and circumstance in the Bible is there to be a vehicle for us to learn to trust God over our feelings. I've got my wife so gun shy for using that word. Ah, don't tell me you feel. No. Feelings will, will get you messed up. Truth makes you free. Yes, that's right. That's right. All my feelings this, my feelings, you've offended me. You've th the whole world is about what offends. Yeah. You, you, you can't do nothing today without, and so pretty soon we're all just going to have to become blank pages of non-existence because you're going to offend somebody. You walk around here offended, you ain't no way you're going to face a giant. And that's where the devil wants you. You need to face that giant so that when you look back over your life, you can praise God for what he's done. Yes. And you can worship God for those divine appointments that he set up. Yes, I got a life. Giant in my past. And we can applaud the God of heaven for the works that he's done in our lives. Mm. Listen. It's time some of us get it in our vocabulary. Trial. I'm going to get a meal out of you. Trouble, I'm fixing to get a blessing from you. Let me warn you, problem, you're going to propel me. Oh, come on, somebody. Being confident of this very thing, that he would have begun a good work, or he's going to finish that work. R remember all the pain and problems Joseph went through? Remember all that? He said... And he spoke to those that were some of the biggest givers of his problems. But as for you, you fought evil against me. Let me help you grab. 
There are some people that may bring evil against you and you may try, I got it right. Where'd you get that right from? Amer America? See, some of you are Ameristolic and not apostolic. You're partial Christians. I know I'm talking about because I struggle with that. I do. I don't want to lose my American rights. But see, the problem with that is I realize now that I'm propagating Pharaoh and not Christianity when I do that. Oh, I get it. You, you're right in what you're saying. But are you right in what you're fighting for? Mm. Are you hearing me? The enemy doesn't need to just flat defeat you if he can distract you. And trust me, he'll go any way and use any means to do that. But he said, and as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. God allowed people to purposely hurt him to get him where God needed him. Oh, I'm going to get a meal out of this mess. Oh, oh, oh okay. for those of you that get it, I'm going to get a meal. Out. My feelings ain't going to stop me from feeding on this meal. My feelings aren't going to stop me from getting honey out of this hurt. My, my feelings ain't going to stop me from getting victory out of this fight. Oh, what came to hurt me is going to feed me. What came to harm me is going to help me. What came to destroy me is going to propel me to my, I ain't got time to get hurt. Ah, God places to go and victories to achieve. Out of the eater came forth meat and out of the strong came forth sweetness. That roaring lion may have come to consume you, but instead it's going to catapult me into my destiny. Be sober, saint. Be vigilant, child of God, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about seeking if he can devour you. So remain steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. You see, the purpose of that rolling line, that trial, don't go cry to somebody about it. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's coming to eat you up. See, you got to learn how to deal with the eaters of life. Some things in life will try to eat you up. You have to understand, when Israel was taken captive by Egypt, they were swallowed up. They were taken captive and swallowed up, put in bondage and made slaves. And all the years of chaos and all the years of slavery and the bondage and the hard trials and the testing was God's divine incubator to birth a nation. What you're going through is an incubator to birth an overcomer. You see, they went down into Egypt, a bunch of disconnected vagabonds and misguided misfits. Seventy went in. But millions came out. Oh. Sometimes God has got to put you through an incubation process so that you can learn to celebrate and worship God in your tribe. So you don't get content to sit over there in failure in a tent. But so you'll stand up and say, is there not a cause? Let me tell you who the worshipers are. They're the ones who've been through some stuff and kept going. They're the ones who faced lions and kept fighting. They're the ones who dealt with bears and kept coming. They're the ones who slayed giants and kept on going. I can stand and I can testify to help someone here tonight, right now, today, that all the stuff that's come into my life to eat me up was allowed and commanded by God to strengthen me. And out of that mess, I'm going to get a meal. Out of this mess, I'm going to get my miracle. Out of this hell, I'm going to get honey. Out of this attack, I'm going to get some anointing. Out of this problem, I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Oh, from all this pain, I'm going to get my promise. Out of this situation, I'm going to get salvation. Out of this disaster, I'm going to get some dessert. Oh, that thing that's roaring against you is going to reward you. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Oh, I don't, it's not going to be formed. 
this is not going to win. It doesn't say your enemy's not going to try. It just says he's not going to prosper. The lion will roar, but the lion's going to give up the reward. In other words, it will not succeed. It will not win. What has come to hurt my life, the Lord's going to use it to help me. Egypt swallowed up Israel. But Egypt ended up being spoiled. The spoiler spoiled Egypt. They went in broke, enslaved the vagabonds, but they left with all the gold. Egypt swallowed them up. Hey, it's one thing to eat something, it's quite another to keep it down. Hello? Some of you need to give the enemy a divine burden. Some of you need to get back to you ain't keep uh-uh, you ain't keeping me down. Oh no, I I I uh, no, I left y'all right there. All those things that's wanted to eat you up and eat up your faith and eat up the faith of God's people. I'm here to tell you that enemy's tried to eat you up, but instead it's going to satisfy you. It's going to feed you. You're going to get a meal out of your miracle. See, we learned from Israel and Egypt that everything you lose on the journey, God's going to give it back to you. Why? Because Israel had a destiny. Why did the lion roar against Samson and nobody else? Because Samson had a destiny. Samson had a purpose. You want to know why the lion's roaring against you right now? Oh, some of you, you're going through some stuff. It's because you have a destiny and a destination. I'm going to say this and it's going to come counter to your ears when you hear it, but sometimes trouble is the best friend you can have. There's necessity in an adversary because some of us have been like King David when the time to go to war, you've laid back, taken nine ease, and your life has been just overcome with all the trivial things of life that you, you don't matter when you show up to the house of God. It doesn't matter if you're prayed up or on fire. We'll have church without you. It don't matter if you show up for prayer for the first three nights of a month. We'll have church without you. I'm not trying to offend you. Do you really want your house to not need you? Do you really want God's house to not need you? Because it's looking for lion slayers, bear killers, and giants. Oh, see, we, 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 it don't matter what you used to do. Okay, we'll write it in the history books. But we want to know what you're going to do right now. What you're going to do right now. What do you matter right now? Remember, the greatest song, the greatest message of the teapot. It sings its best when it's neck deep in hot water. Hear me today, saying to God, what came to hurt you is going to help you. What came to eat you is going to feed you. Oh, remember the fiery furnace? <laughs> it, it was meant to devour the, he, the three Hebrews. Instead, it set them free. When your Christian conviction stands against the world's customs and you declare you will not bow, I promise you, you will be delivered. You will not bow. Daniel's lion's den. There are some situations you're not scared. Some of you think, God will keep me out of this. Can you imagine if David said, I really want to deal with the God and Goliath situation. Let's just bypass that one. Nobody ever would have knew who he was. Some of you keep trying to climb to the top of the mountain. You miss what God wants to develop in the valley. There was a hundred years ago in a little town called Enterprise, Alabama. They got a statue 
in their city center. Statue of a woman standing there holding up a great big pot. And on the top of that pot is a simulated statue of a bow weevil. Celebrating a bug. That statue, her white marble arms stretched high above her head. <laughs> that enormous 50 pound bull weevil. Bull weevil is really smaller than the fingernail on your pinky finger. But you have to understand the plaque reads in profound appreciation of the bull weevil and what it has done as the herald of prosperity. This monument was erected by the citizens of Enterprise, Coffee County, Alabama. You see, the boll weevil came in and decimated their agriculture. It decimated their cotton crops. It came in and destroyed their livelihood. And so they erected a monument to it. They thanked it with appreciation. You need to appreciate your lions, your bears, and your giants because they propel you to prosperity. See, when, when that little place of Enterprise, Alabama realized they couldn't grow cotton, they couldn't do it, they went ahead and started growing peanuts. Don't you snuck your nose up at peanuts. They turned around and made more money than they ever made with cotton with those peanuts. But they never would have known that if the bull weasel didn't come in and flick them. See? Now I'm not expecting you to build a statue to your lions, tigers, and bears, and giants. We'll only lift our hands to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But every one of us needs to appreciate when the lion roars against us. Because out of Eden, we're going to get strength. And out of the hurt, we're going to get some honey. And we're going to realize adversity is not abandonment. God is still with me. He brought it to me to propel me. And like David, we're going to slay that giant. Oh, we're going to be able to lift our hands up and we're going to pray. Oh, I thank God that that adversity came my way to show me the way, to show me the direction that I needed to go. Every one of us ought to thank God right now for the adversary, adversity that became the blessing that opened my eyes to the will of God in my life. Until I was afflicted, I went astray. Remember Job's trial, and I'm going to close with this. Let's gather around the front. You see, the enemy we know roared against him. It was the trial literally from hell. That hell came to hurt, but it handed him honey. Anybody know how long that trial was? Two years. Boy, I'll tell you what, if you knew what he had before and you realize that all got taken away in a two-year span, what the Bible says he got, and it says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and almost as a footnote, like it was nothing to God. And, and also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Oh, devil, you mess with the wrong people. Oh, lion, you roared against the law, wrong saint of God. I'm going to get honey out of this hurt. Oh, I'm going to get victory out of this fight. Oh, I'm just getting started, Jack. You done messed. You done messed with the wrong person.